as part of the module one so next we will discuss regarding the get git versioning and uh, the databricks repo uh, with the with the theoretical part of it and also with the demo so before uh, proceeding if you are new to the, the, this channel and haven't yet subscribed for this channel we would recommend you to please subscribe and also press bell button for instant notification so let's get uh, started So Databricks uh, notebook, uh, I mean, first uh, coming back, coming uh, step back, right? So if you are working in any programming language or any coding or any scripting, right? So the version control, uh, you might have aware uh, what is the importance of version control, right? So the, the code repository will mention uh, so that, uh, you, I mean, if you are working in a collaborative environment, multiple, multiple people are working, multiple developer, tester, analyst are working and there might be accidentally code change or they might uh, overwrite your code codes. Uh, and sometimes the code might get deleted and uh, it might be unrecoverable also similarly like uh, if you have worked in any java or .NET or any kind of programming language you might have used a git repository similar to that uh, databricks also has uh, support for the git repository but by default it will not support uh, or it will not it will not be integrated with the github but it provides the basic uh, version or the revision control we would say but uh, it is just for a uh, what you say like if if a same notebook uh, is repeatedly getting uh, like a change uh, right so it will just track the changes but it is not a sophisticated revision version control so if uh, suppose if the history uh, of a notebook can be lost if if the notebook itself is deleted or the notebook is renamed or the notebook uh, is kind of a moved from one location to another location which is pretty much pos uh, possible so basic uh, control uh, of the notebook is not fully fledged uh, that that's what we can say uh, to uh, make it as a like a full support of a git uh, kind of a feature right so that's where uh, databricks uh, still needs a support from the external github repository so there are a different github repository so you can use the enterprise gate or you can use azure devops gate you can use uh, uh, there are different uh, like uh, GitLab is there and uh, Bitbucket is there. So you can use a different kind of uh, Gits uh, uh, to kind of integrate with, right? And uh, so basically like uh, if you are, uh, if you start using uh, this uh, GitHub uh, integration of GitHub, right? So what, what it will support is it starts reporting the branch. It's, it, uh, it supports the merging of the code. And it also the main thing is it supports the CI CD pipeline. That means continuous integration and de development. So usually if you have a development environment, you have a test UAT and production. So the code has to be migrated from the lower environment to the higher environment, right? So that time uh, you need a Git repository and a proper CI CD pipeline set up uh, to move the code from one repository to another repository. So to support all this, uh, definitely the Databricks notebook has to integrate with the git so with the git integration what we are uh, uh, trying to achieve here is uh, definitely the versioning suppose if the code is uh, the code is lost or the code is being modified uh, you can go go back in time and get the version a previous version of the code and revert the changes back so that is uh, the default uh, feature that we get from the git and also you can uh, create a ci cd integration like you can create a multiple repos like uh, development repo and then integration repo then UAT repo and then finally a production repo where you can set up the flow where you migrate code from uh, one repo to another higher uh, repositories so uh, you will be able to do a CI CD right so next uh, let us see like uh, the CI CD integration how exactly it works right like uh, definitely like there will be a Databricks web application and then so you will integrate your repos with the notebooks and then there will be a jobs also there will be, there will be a cluster management also right so basically if you see the repo integration this is an external uh, git repository or the ci cd system so basically th these two will be external you can use uh, as we mentioned you can use any external git like azure devops git or github integration or gitlab or bitbucket or any kind of a git service and also ci cd service there is a you can use a, like example azure devops provides its own ci cd kind of pipelines you can use that and when you integrate your databricks notebook with git what happens definitely there is a version controls okay and if you are if you can make a push and pull of the codes you can create a new branches okay and there is a review system you can have uh, based on your uh, organization standards uh, like a code review and also finally you can have the 
integration like a CI CD where you want to move the code from one environment to the other environment. So next, uh, if you see Databricks repos, uh, the best practice, right? So this is like a, this is how the high level picture looks like uh, as a best practice, right? So usually the most enterprise uh, uh, organization, enterprise level organization will follow the same approach uh, where as you can see the dark gray color or the dark blue color, you can see the color notification here. If you see, these are all the performed in the Databricks uh, side and uh, this is where is are performed with the git provider side right so databricks side it starts with the cloning a remote repository to use a folder particular folder will be from the uh, databricks notebook will be cloned to the repository actual repository right and then uh, you can create a new branch based on the main branch so this is quite important uh, why we are creating based on the main branches you get the latest version that means you are pulling the latest version of the main branch uh, and you create a new version of the new version of a branch your own branch right so wh then what you do is uh, you, you will create a, and each and each and every developers or testers will create their own branch and they make they can uh, they are free to make their own uh, code changes they can add a file delete a file or edit a particular file and then finally they can uh, commit and push the code to the code to feature branch so uh, once they commit the code right so that it will go to the github repository and there will be a pull request uh, can be created and uh, there will be a review process so once there is a pull request uh, maybe a uh, uh, the, the person who is supposed to do a peer review or uh, the person who does a uh, uh, kind of a review as the, as per the organization standards so does the code review here and once he approves uh, the code will be merged into the main branch which uh, you can call it as a higher environment like from development you are uh, migrating the code to the production so finally there will be a git automation call uh, which uh, pushes the code to the actual databricks uh, workspace right and your code will be moved to the uh, actual uh, folders of the databricks Right. And finally, you can you are free to run the Databricks job uh, since they are uh, uh, in the repos. So you'll be that uh, will be reflecting in your Databricks workspace and you can run the jobs. So this is all about the theoretical part of it. And uh, let's quickly jump to the demo. So as you can see, I have uh, my own GitHub created in the GitHub.com and the GitHub repository. So what I can uh, pretty much do is uh, so go to this uh, the user icon that you see here and uh, you can go to the settings so once you go to the settings and come back down here in the left side you see a developer settings so and there is a something called as a person ac personal access token and uh, click on tokens here and uh, then uh, just you can click on the generate a new token classic where i can just uh, provide some information like uh, what is the purpose of this uh, creation of uh, token right so I just want this and uh, the expiration date that you give here uh, is quite uh, important to choose when you are giving for production. So if you are giving the expiration date is just two, I mean, two kind of a large date, right? Like if you're giving 300 days or 400 days, so there is a security threat. So it is always recommended to kind of refresh this uh, personal access token, uh, like quite regularly according to your uh, organization policy. So just choose that carefully, the expiration and before expiration, uh, you need to come and uh, refresh the token here uh, and integrate that with the Databricks. So before that, so we were just uh, in the process of creation of the token here. So basically to create a Databricks repo, like you need the two informations. One is the username. So that we, ha that we have actually with, that's with, uh, we have uh, logged in and the other one is a token. So that we are currently generating, right? So once we click on create a token here, so it will generate some token here and I'm just uh, temporarily copying this token into some uh, location. Now, so there is uh, something called as uh, settings in the Databricks option. Let's search for settings here. Yeah, you can just go for a user settings. And then there is something called as a Git integration. And inside Git integration, you can see here, as we were telling in the demo, right? Uh, in the theoretical part of it, you can you can integrate with uh, the enterprise gate, the normal gate, and uh, uh, like uh, 
Bitbucket and there are different Azure DevOps Git. So there are different options or the Git providers you can integrate with. So basically the username that we have, I'm just giving the username uh, like here. So after giving the username, it asks me is that token. So I'm just uh, giving the token which I've copied earlier and just clicking on save. So as you can see now the save is successful. So now that uh, we have created this, uh, I mean integrated with the Git, Git integration with the Databricks, right? We will go back to our uh, GitHub and we'll try to create a like a repository, right? So now uh, I'm in the process of creating a new repo here. So demo Databricks, right? So and then I can give a give, I mean uh, some description here and I can make it public. So then uh, I can just click on create repository. So let me uh, come back here and uh, give underscore v1. So just I want to uh, correct one thing and I want to add a, add, re, uh, add a readme file here. And then I want to go ahead and create a repository. So as we see the repository demo Databricks v1 is created and there is a main branch here and uh, you can see a readme file also that's been created inside that. So now quickly let us come back to the Databricks workspace and uh, go to the repo. So now we will uh, click on add repo. So you just need to uh, give the repository name here like a github.com and the username and then the repository name dot git here. And you can mention here uh, GitLab or GitHub whatever the your uh, git provider name is. Right? And then click on submit. So once that is successfully done, right, if you can come to repo and click on uh, the repos here and you can see uh, there is a main uh, branch which is created and uh, if you click on the main, main branch, you can see the readme file. And uh, pretty much you can start uh, creating any code here. Before starting uh, to create any code, the important thing is to is to a kind of a create a development branch here, right? So to create that, uh, if you just kind of a click on this main branch, it will open this uh, dialog window where you will to see the multiple options and also you see an option to create a branch here. As you can see, there is some uh, error here. Let us go back to the settings and verify. Yeah, there is a mistake that we have made uh, is like we have to select uh, GitHub here instead of uh, selecting the Azure DevOps Kit, right? And then we will be able to give the. Let us try this uh, giving that correct token now, and it is successful. And let us come back now and uh, let us try to do this again. So just again, click on Create Branch and now Create. Let us wait. Yeah. So now it is able to create a Dev Branch as you can see here and. Uh, we are successfully able to kind of create the development branch and where we can we can start uh, i mean writing our uh, i mean writing our uh, code and we can start uh, uh, the development part of it right so now let us uh, close this dialog uh, since we have uh, already created uh, but uh, please remember that if you want to switch anytime right you can go and switch to the different branch from dev to main uh, here but it is always recommended to use a development branch like whenever you want to kind of uh, uh, like actually uh, doing a development task. So here you can, you are pretty much uh, like uh, open to cre create a, like any new uh, notebook that you want to create, right? So you want to create a notebook one, like dot Python. So, and you can choose a cluster and create it. So that now, as you can see, it will uh, create uh, the notebook in the development branch. Also, if you want, uh, you can create a folder here, uh, just uh, to make it more readable right so create a folder demo folder create it and also pretty much you can move the notebook to the demo folder right so now uh, we have done some kind of uh, coding so we have completed our uh, development so let us start uh, pushing it to the like uh, 
pushing it to the git repository or the higher environment if you click on here right so it will show you the history so previous history i mean there was nothing and now you have added it it actually shows that the one file has been changed so similarly you can you can uh, like if any file is modified it will show a particular file is modified since there is no modified file it's just like a fresh file you are adding a new file you are adding it just shows the that you are adding a file and also the green color whatever you see it is the addition and the minus whatever you see it is a deletion so this is quite important right like uh, when there are multiple files multiple people working in uh, in a particular project and if somebody has uh, mistakenly modified or overwritten your code you'll be able to review that uh, changes before exactly committing the changes also there is an option uh, where you can choose like if there are 10 uh, changes that you see here you can select uh, select or unselect select the changes uh, that you want to move uh, only like it's just like a selective deployment that you want to do over a particular files right so that is also uh, that option you can use it uh, by using this checkbox so once uh, you uh, kind of select select or uh, review the changes uh, so then uh, you have to give the commit message uh, like saying that uh, what exactly you are committing which is mandatory field as you can see here so i'm just giving adding first file and the description is optional and then you can uh, click on commit and push so as you can see it uh, it is uh, i mean it, it is the the push is successful and now you see there is no change so there is no change between the workspace uh, uh, get repository and the actual git repository and if you go back to your uh, the github and if you see the development branch so now you are in the main branch if i shift switch to the development branch that we have created and you can see the demo folder is created and also the notebook is created this means uh, you are able to successfully push the code uh, from the databricks workspace repo to the actual uh, the data uh, actual uh, repository of the github it might uh, look uh, simple i mean uh, when you are working individually but if uh, you are working in a project where uh, a particular person is working i mean different persons uh, different developers are working on a same kind of a notebook so then uh, when you are pushing the code there might be a code conflict so that's where it asks you to change i mean the review the changes here right so whenever you does that uh, so it shows the conflict and uh, what you have to do is you have to again uh, like uh, pull the changes and uh, push it back so like whenever you are do it is always recommended to kind of uh, uh, before starting any development you pull the latest version and uh, when, once you pull the latest version right you are sure that uh, you are uh, working on the la most latest version of the production so when you are pushing it back uh, your code conflict will be the reduced basically it will not be made completely avoided there can still be the changes but uh, it's always best practice to pull and then do uh, changes uh, when you are, you are doing uh, any new development so in this video we are successfully successfully able to integrate the integrate the uh, repository of the github to our databricks notebook and able to kind of uh, uh, create a code and push the code to the databricks uh, workspace successfully so that was the intent of this video to show how you can work uh, or the integrate uh, the databricks workspace or the databricks code with the uh, github uh, repository so hope you, it was useful thanks for watching